UTM stack distributed architecture is designed for flexibility and scalability. It consists of a master server that will hold all data and will be responsible for processing and correlating every single event. Then we have proxy servers. These proxy servers are responsible for collecting the data from multiple agents and devices that will be reporting to the SIM solution. This could be firewalls, this could be Windows servers, or this could be Linux servers or even hypervisors. Some of these devices will require special agents that will forward the data to the proxy servers. Even though UTM stack uses a distributed architecture, proxies are optional. If you do not require the usage of proxy or have internal divisions inside your network, it's probably better just to have a master server and multiple agents sending data directly to your master server. For the sake of today's Sure video, we're going to be installing a master server and multiple agents to send data to it directly. Installing a UTM stack master server is simple. All instructions can be found in the GitHub repo readme file. First step is to establish an SSH connection to the server that will hold the installation of the master UTM stack. Second step is to download the installer. Once we get the installer, let's give permissions to the file. Finally, let's execute the file. This will start the installation menu. Here we can select if we want to install a master server, a pro or proxy server, or uninstall the UTM stack. For this video, we're going to be installing a base master server. Data directory specifies where data is going to be saved. In this case, we're going to use the home UTM stack directory, database password, just put the password of your preference. Fully qualified domain name. This depends on what domain you want to use, if you want to access the stack from outside, or if you're going to be accessing only from the inside, you can use the public IP of the server you're running on. In this case, we're going to use the public IP of the server only. Customer name and customer email are only for the internal use of the system and will be used in the configuration for alerting and reporting. This data is not sent to UTM stack and it will always remain inside the application only. Finally, click install and wait for the installation to complete. Once the UTM installation completes, it can be accessed using the default user and password. User admin, password admin. When you first log in into the system, it will ask you to configure the different modules that the application offers. For now, let's cancel and Let's explore the features of the system. UTM stack dashboard section is a flexible data visualization tool. It can be used to create new dashboards, visualizations, represent them, and even export them as PDF documents or Word documents. There are other sections important as well. We have the alert management section, this is where the security operation team and security engineers spend most of the time reviewing alerts, events, and relevant logs. Then we have incidents and incident response. When an important alert is defined to be not a false positive and is something that indeed represents a threat to the organization, is converted into an incident. 
UTM stack also offers the possibility to proceed with instant response commands and take action on compromised hosts or users. The Log Explorer is very useful for correlating information and performing forensic analysis. Let's say we want to see all the activity of a certain user for the last two or three hours, or what a user did three weeks ago. This is the place you will want to go to do these kind of things. Of course, it will also work for any device, not only for users, but it's a very flexible tool that can be used to drill down the logs and, um, and explore in deep. Then we have the compliance section. Compliance section allows you to generate those reports that auditors ask for. Uh, there are already created reports for HIPAA, uh, GDPR, GLBA, SOC, FISMA, and many more are coming up. The asset management section allows you to have uh, better control of the assets inside your organization. Uh, this tool is, is very flexible as well and is capable of finding assets inside your organization automatically. After you configure the module for the first time, it will scan your network automatically in a passive manner and add any asset that it finds. Uh, reports are more like system reports, not specifically created for compliance purposes, but more for security engineers to have better visibility over the environment. Vulnerability management, as the name suggests, is a module that allows the security engineers to perform vulnerability scans on web applications, systems, internal servers, proxies, DNSs. Basically, every single device inside the organization can be scanned with this module. Then we have the integration sections, which we are going to leave uh, for now, and we'll come back to it later. Uh, then we have the AD Auditor. The AD Auditor is the place you want to go to keep strict control over your users, administrators, and basically have visibility over everything that is happening inside the organization. This is the place you will want to go if you want to know what the user did yesterday, who what new users who you have in the organization, what users received new permissions, and who has been added to new groups. Office 365 is an special integration with uh, Office 365 products. Uh, it allows you to monitor Active Directory, SharePoint, Exchange, basically every major service. Uh, file classification is, uh, as the name suggests, is, uh, works like a file tracker that allows you to see who accesses a file, who copies the file, who sends a file via email, and uh, all activity related to files that are important for the organization. It's a good way to make sure that your information is safe and know who is touching it. Log sources is the place to see where all the logs come in and all devices sending logs to the scene. Now let's go back to the integration section. The integration section allows you to deploy and integrate agents and custom APIs with systems that are that will be monitored by the stack. In this case, we're going to use the Windows agent for this small uh, video. To install the UTM stack agent for a Windows server, click the download page link. Now download the installation package from the Git repo. For this video, we have already downloaded it, and it's already in one of our servers. Now double click the installation. And with this, the installation of the agent is completed. On the probe API field, make sure you enter the IP of the proxy server or the AP of the master server where UTM stack has been installed. Remember, 
probes and proxy servers are always optional. You may only you might have gone through the route of having only a master server, or maybe you have a proxy server. In any of the cases, UTM stack is able to receive logs from an agent either from a proxy or from the master. So let's enter the IP of the master server that we have already. Click Save. And check the status of the agent to make sure everything is working OK. As we can see, the host IDS is working correctly. And the Windows log sender is also working OK. So we should be able to see logs now from the UTM stack panel side. So let's get back to the UTM stack console. As we can see, there are logs already being received. And as part of the initial assessment performed that by the UTM stack agent, some alerts were created. If we click one of the alerts, you will be able to see more details about it, as well as the IP and the full log that generated the alert. As data is being received by the system, dashboards will start to populate. For example, if we go to the host instruction detection system, you will be able to see some of the alerts that were generated right in the dashboard. All dashboards are interactive. If you click any element within it, it will take you to the exact alert or event linked to the component. Also, you will be able to verify that logs are being received from the source by going to the log sources overview menu. By clicking here, you will be able to see all the sources and all devices that are currently sending logs to the UTM stack. If the device becomes responsive and stops sending logs, the status will change and should say disconnected. Thank you for taking the time to try UTM stack. And please, if you have any question, don't hesitate to contact us via contact form or support request.